All right, folks, uh, it's three o'clock here in Texas, so we're going to get this webinar going today. Uh, thanks for joining us. We have an interview with one of our successful entrepreneurs and uh, ABS licensees, Bob Wilkie, today. Do this. So I see Bob has already showed up there. And hey, your video is working now, Bob. Yeah, got it working. Technology is wonderful only when it works. <laughs> exactly. Well, somebody looked at this picture that I was showing at my office this morning and said, you guys look like your uh, brothers or something. Your hair is almost the same color. Of course, yours was back then a little darker, I see, Bob. That was, what, 2007 you came through our training. That's right. Yeah, seven years ago already. Seven so years I ago next. So has this business just uh, turned you gray or is it just, uh, you know, age? Actually, I think I'd be more gray if it weren't for the business. <laughs> I will tell you this. I've, I've gained 15 pounds. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But oh, well, it. there you go. Uh, you must be I, making I, some money then to afford to eat that well. Yeah, well, yeah, eating out too much. <laughs> now, you're uh, actually showing your video there from your home office right now, right? Up in uh, what part of Washington are you in? We're just 20 minutes north of Seattle, a little town called Edmonds. We're right on the water. Edmonds, okay. And so if you looked out your window right now, what would you see? Uh, the Puget Sound. I get to see the ferries going by and uh, other ships, and uh, it's a pretty neat place. Oh, right nice. Yeah. We're very yeah I, I usually do these webinars right here out of my home office, too. So, all right, well, we're going to get right into this, folks, by uh, asking Bob some questions. Uh, I'm going to interview him a little bit here, let him tell you his story. And at the same time, if you want to ask him questions, again, I'll be monitoring those questions as they come in. Uh, there's actually one or two uh, coming in right now. So, uh, Bob, I'll, I'll just throw those in as we go. Why don't you start by telling us uh, what made you investigate and, and get into uh, medical billing? Well, I have to blame my wife. Uh, we had married uh, early on, in, or early in 19, 2007, and she'd moved from Scotland and had always been in uh, pension plans there and wanted to do something here, didn't want to be a stay-at-home wife. So I said, uh, pick out a business, start something on your own, I'll support you. So she did her due diligence, did some investigating, and came across the uh, ABS website, got excited about medical billing, said, this is what I want to do, but I've got to go to uh, Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth for training. Would you go with me? So my business uh, was seasonal. I had time, so uh, flew in to be supportive of her, and I got excited. I thought, I'm flying 100,000 miles a year, and uh, I'm a newly married man. I don't want to be... Uh, leaving my wife home alone when we're still newlyweds. So I thought this is a way to get off the road, run a business with her, and create something new and exciting. And that's exactly what we did. That's well, my so, story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so so neither one of you had any background in the medical field? Oh, no. My background was in uh, sports collectibles. I uh, had retail stores. I worked in licensing. I worked with the NFL, ML, Major League Baseball, put on events. In between all that, had a radio program. This was the farthest thing from my mind. My oldest son the other day said, gee, Dad, I can't believe you're a medical biller. Uh, but that's what we do. And, and so it was an entirely different background for me. Uh, and I'm, it, it's, it, it's fun and it's exciting. Wow, so collectibles, huh? So you, that's why you did all that traveling. You had to go to shows all over the country, I guess. Well, and a lot to New York because uh, the leagues and players associations were located there, and we often had meetings with them. I see. Okay. Course, that's how I met my wife. I met her in New York. Oh, and then you brought her back home with you. Well, sure. Yeah. Several months later, she moved from uh, Scotland and came back here. Oh, cool. That's a great story. Uh, what was her background? What, what was she doing? She was uh, in Scotland. They called it pension schemes. I told her you can't use the term schemes in the United States. So the pension plans. Oh yeah. Okay. So she had a somewhat, somewhat of a financial background. I wonder what caused her to think, hmm, I think I'll get into medical billing. <laughs> you know, I've never asked her that. I should have put that. I should have an interview with her sometime and ask her that question. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, well, so she ran across this, I, I take it just over, over the internet, just by doing some Googling, huh? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, she was very impressed. And, of course, we were amazingly impressed once we got there and, and saw – how professional ABS was, all the staff, they were great to work with and have been ever since. The support, as I'm sure the other licensees out there that are listening and will attest to that, to the fact that uh, ABS really means it when they say, we're here for you. Because that's, yeah, that, that's exactly what you've been for us. Yeah, you know, at one time, Bob, we only had like, I don't know, a two-year uh, support or maybe one year at one time, then two year. And then at some point I said, you know what, our model is based on making a few pennies on every transaction that goes through the system. 
why wouldn't I want to support somebody forever as long as they're sending transactions to the system? You know, so now we have lifetime support, which means as long as you're, you know, a licensee of ABS and, and uh, sending transactions, we'll continue to support you in whatever ways we need to. Well, that's fabulous. I don't know of any other organization that provides that kind of help and support, Patrick. You know, I don't either. We're pretty unique in that uh, sense. In fact, we don't have a lot of competition out there. People have asked me, well, who's your major competitor out there? And really, there's only one or two other companies that do any kind of uh, training on how to become a medical billing uh, medical billing company, you know. And uh, th those are not live training sessions. Uh, they, they just do it over the phone, which is, uh, I guess, one way to do it. <laughs> but anyway. Well, and look at your history. How long have you been in existence? Yeah, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. So, Who can say that? We must be doing something right. I think you are. <laughs> uh, somebody asked me the other day, they said, we ran across something uh, that was a little negative out there on one of the forums or something. Somebody had said something. We didn't even know who it was that posted that, but they said, you know, I kind of ignored it because it sounded like maybe they, they just uh, were out there just, you know, one of those trolls, I guess they call them trolls. Is that the word? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> they were just posting stuff about us for some reason. And I said, well, you know, it was anonymous. There was no way to get a hold of the person and verify it. I said, look, we've got people like you, Bob, that we can give you the actual name of that person. You can call them. Uh, they'll talk to you as long as you want to. Uh, some of them have commercial offices that they've opened, you know, that you can go visit them if you ask them nicely. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and we don't keep a, an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau for 20 years, you know, with doing something wrong. You have to be pretty up front with people nowadays because the internet, man, it can, it can eat you alive. Yes, it can. And you, you do have to monitor those uh, reviews. Fortunately, Knockwood, we haven't had any on our end, but uh, uh, you have to be careful. Yeah. All right. So you got into it. Uh, that was back in 2007. Is that when the training was? Yes, 2007. And I was still, uh, still on my uh, other company with partners. And so uh, we set a goal that within three years, we would be doing this full time. So made arrangements with my partners to buy me out over that period of time, which they did. Uh, took a little longer to get going than we thought. Uh, it's, it's building a business isn't easy, just doesn't happen. And medical billing is definitely it takes a lot of work and dedication to, to find those clients, those initial clients. But we did. Uh, we started with one and now we've got uh, 12 or 13. Oh, wow. Awesome. And, and you're right, uh, Bob. We try to make it as plain as possible to people that this is not a fad. It's not a get rich quick thing. It's, it's a real business that provides a real needed service in the community. And when you are out there fulfilling a need in the community, uh, that's how you make money and that's how you build a, a solid business. That's right. And you set goals. You, you stick to the goals. Obviously, you have to alter them and adjust, but uh, it, it just takes dedication and stick to itiveness. And uh, uh, it, it just that's that's key is making well, setting those. Yeah. And you prove that you can actually build this business uh, part time, so to speak, while you're maintaining another business or job. And we've had lots of licensees do that who are working 40, 50 hours a week and they still, uh, we teach them how to you know, build it in their spare time because there are ways to connect in your community, right? Outside the typical nine to five uh, business hours. And, and that's what we did. And fortunately now, I still do a little consulting in the uh, sports collectibles realm, but this is our, my wife's and mine. My wife's name is Molly. It's our full-time gig. We don't do anything else besides as I mentioned, a little consulting. Try to eat and sleep in between, but uh, it's, it's what we do. <laughs> well, that's the nice thing is you can work, uh, you know, midnight to four in the morning, I guess, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, our time is uh, obviously everything, most everything is, on, is online, it's virtual, so you can choose your hours. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I see a couple of questions coming in, so I'm going to uh, try to address those um, as they come in, one of the questions is from Ann. She says, Bob, how long did it take you to get your first client? You mentioned uh, three years. Our first client, I think it was 2009. So it took us a couple of years. But again, keep in mind, we still had other things going on. And I must admit, the first year or two, we weren't as dedicated. At least I wasn't because I was still working my other job. But once we saw the end of my uh, my bus other business kind of drawing near, we knew that we had to get to gear up and that's when we started getting additional clients. So don't let the two years discourage you, Anne. Uh, I think we could have done something quicker. I just don't think we were as motivated then. Yeah. I hope that let's, answers your question. Let's see, uh, Richard wants to know, do you, uh, Bob and uh, Molly, have to create your own website and set up your own business entity? 
Well, we did have to set up our own business entity. Uh, I don't know if things might have changed with ABS since we began. Uh, part of our package was we we were given a website as part of the, and, and again, yeah that's yeah that's still included yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So and then we've altered it, changed it. Uh, I just put a walking video on it. As a matter of fact, if you log into our website now, I come walking up from the uh, the left of the screen and uh, talk to you for two minutes and give a little pitch. I think I look real good in it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. That sounds like your radio background has morphed into uh, the audio video uh, production. <laughs> well, I, I do have a face made for radio, so. <laughs> a face made for radio? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> oh, that's an old radio joke from way back. It is. It is. Well, I'm not a young man. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Rich says, Bob, can you describe a typical day? Uh, every day is different. Uh, I try to take one day a week and visit clients. Uh, it doesn't happen with all of them because some of them aren't that close. But uh, we, uh, we are firm believers in, in touching flesh, letting them know we're there, caring about them. You know, they can send everything to us in, in digital form, but uh, there's nothing like uh, shaking hands and meeting face to face, at least on a, on a monthly basis, if not weekly. Uh, the morning is spent, uh, we do everything from filing claims, we have people that do it for us, we do it as well when we need to, it's all hands on deck when necessary. A lot of the time is spent, uh, not necessarily me, but other staff calling up insurance companies and finding out why a claim wasn't paid or what issues there may be. Uh, it really does vary from day to day. Uh, there's uh, anything from invoicing your clients to posting payments, uh, chasing up patients, some of our clients ask us to follow through on past due accounts. Uh, so it, it does, it's, it's, a, it's a full day and you have to plan it out each morning and just tick off each of the items that you finish on your to-do list. Yeah, that's kind of the difference between uh, having a job, working for somebody else who tells you exactly what you need to be doing usually during the day and having your own business. You do have the flexibility to do whatever you want to do when you want to do it, but you got to be disciplined at that, don't you? You do, and you can't expect uh, that it's just going to happen because it's not. So it is different than working for somebody else. You have to decide what has to be done and then prioritize what has to be done first, what's most important. And my focus is always, the first thing, I, I have two things I focus on. First of all, customer service, making sure that the client is happy. And number two, I address the items that are going to get us paid first. That's the most, those are the two most important factors, I think, in our business. Uh, I'm going to write myself a little note here because there's one question that has just been asked by um, Mary Kay uh, that I want to make sure that I address towards the end. And you'll see why I'm kind of putting this off because uh, I don't want people running all over the web while we're talking here. But uh, so Mary Kay, I will get to that question. Here's one from Laura, though. She says, uh, Bob, what kind of providers do you have and how did you market to them? Well, first, let me address the marketing part first. Uh, when our early days with ABS, uh, we would attend webinars. And whenever, Patrick, you'd have somebody on that had a success story to tell, much like you're doing with me, thank you, uh, everybody would ask, somebody would always ask the, the person being interviewed, how did you get your clients? And I think nine times out of ten, if not more so, they would say B&I, B&I, Business Networking International. So we joined B&I uh, within a year after we uh, became uh, licensees through ABS. And if it weren't for B&I, our business would not exist. And we were appreciative of the support that uh, ABS and Patrick have given us, but you've got to get out there and meet people. And B&I affords you that, that opportunity. The chamber's great. I go to the chamber at least two or three times a week, a month rather, but it's not the same. Uh, Business Networking International is just the way to go. And if you don't know more, more about it, Google it. You need to get involved if you're not a member of one already. Yeah, there are it, many chapters that just, have medical doors. And so it's just BNI.com? BNI. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it depends on your area. Yeah, you just do BNI.com and you'll get the information you need. In terms of the, the type of providers we bill for, we have a number of mental health clinics that we're doing uh, billing for. I'm hoping they'll do some trade out with me. I could use the work on my brain. Uh, chiropractor, we have a couple of acupuncturists, a dietitian. Uh, we just uh, finalized a physical therapist yesterday. Uh, we have a number of massage clinics, uh, a couple of naturopaths, and uh, we're about to uh, close a deal with a home health care company. So it's quite diverse, but they all have the same need, and that is they need somebody to file their claims for them. Now, were some of those uh, referrals from other uh, current clients or 
all brand all new. One, all but one of them came either directly or indirectly from as a result of BNI. So that's that's the, the that's the greatest testimony that I can ever get for BNI. Yeah. Uh, so and then we have another part of our business is credit card processing. Those are the two things that we do, and 75% of those clients came to us as a result of uh, BNI. So BNI yeah. BNI BNI can't recommend it enough. Yeah, that's one of the sessions that we. I don't know how much we went into that when you came through training in 2007, Bob. But we 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 take a great big section there on business networking, how to do it connections you can make, organizations like BNI, and uh, we even give them a, a little presentation that they can give during those sessions, you know, when they meet with people. It's a, it's a, it's the ideal way to build a business like this, isn't it? It really is. And there are probably a, a number of chapters in your city, so you can pick and choose which chapter is the best fit for you. Yep. Good. Okay. Well, hey, so uh, tell us about the physical therapist. You just signed this up yesterday? Yes, uh, one of my B and I uh, chapter mates uh, just he builds cabinets and was in talking to her about cabinets. What do you do? I'm a physical therapist. He says, "Oh, are you happy with your biller?" Because I need a biller. So I went out, had a meeting with her yesterday. I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. It did. Uh, she wanted to insisted that she wanted to pay by the hour. I explained when we got there, when I got there, why that isn't the best uh, solution for her, and explained why percentage based was. And she said, "Oh, that makes sense." And so she said, "Let's do it." So, yeah, so, off for, so for the listeners that don't know, uh, most of the time a billing company like yourself charges a percentage of the money that's actually collected for the doctor. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And Not, we, the old motto, and we, we got it from you, Patrick, I'm sure you've shared it with the, the, your licensees many, many times, but we don't get paid until the doctor gets paid. Yeah, that's the motivation that makes a uh, outside biller much more efficient at collecting that money than... Uh, just a paid employee who has no motivation at all to collect uh, any more than, you know, whatever's billed is billed and whatever comes in, comes in. Absolutely. And if I charge her by the hour, it probably would be more than she wanted to pay. And there's no, it's just human nature. The incentive isn't the same. That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I think we answered Larry's question then about what marketing have you used to sign up doctors? By the way, you've only mentioned a, a couple, but uh, Bob, now we're covering 10 specific different ways that licensees have found, you know, to market their services. So you need to come back down for training again. <laughs> I'd like that. <laughs> we love Dallas, so why not? Yeah, there you go. All right, let's see. Uh, I think, Richard, we answered your question too. How long did it take you to get the first uh, few clients and how did you market yourselves? Okay, so I think a lot of these were all tapped in kind of simultaneously there. Uh, this one is from uh, – Eileen, same thing. How long did it get you, take you to get started? And, and you know, you address something there, Bob, that is pretty, I mean, we're being upfront with people here. It, it's, 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 you know, we didn't script this out. You obviously took longer than most licensees do to, to get the thing up and running, but you, you were running your other business. And we have licensees who go out the first week out of training and they've already made some connections and they, they, they get their first client within the first, you know, 30, 60 days. I'd say well, average is closer to probably 90 days, but see, I, I'm convinced too, Patrick, that if I were, if we were hungry, if that when we first, when we left uh, training that uh, cold December in 2007, we probably would have been more motivated to come home and, and get clients. There wasn't an urgency, but uh, as I said, as the uh, the clock ticked down, we began to realize we've got to we've got to build this business, and then when we really, we really started focusing on it. And that's when it happened. Well, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, it all has to do with the motivation. If somebody doesn't have a job, for example, they can focus on it full time as soon as they get back home and get their client just as quick as they can. But others just take time. You you obviously were uh, filthy rich and uh, didn't need the money. <laughs> yeah, from your mouth. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, you know, I, I've heard the stories where uh, you know licensees have come home and gotten picked up two or three clients all at once. It, it, Every story is different. That's every success, every every road to success is different as well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see, Rasid, I hope I'm saying that right, says, uh, Bob, how, how were you able to get your first client? You told us that was through networking. Uh, did you have to go door to door or was it by phone or other ways? You know, you can see from these questions, uh, Bob, that's the biggest concern everybody has, right? How do you get clients? And over the last 20 years, we've just kind of, you know, figured that out. And that's what we well, should do. And we, but Rashid, we did the uh, the door to door. We d dropped off brochures. 
uh, took picked up business cards, followed up afterwards. We held, we even held some free seminars at, uh, and this is a great. This was actually got one of our clients from from uh, this. This means we approached assisted living, uh, an assisted living place here in Edmonds. They offered to use, the, uh, we could use their facility at no charge. They even created uh, or had their chef make uh, refreshments, pastries and cookies and and things like that, coffee and tea. And then we really busted our hump going out and uh, with really nice printed invitations inviting doctors to attend. The attendance wasn't always great. It was always under 10 people. But um, we always made sure that our, our, our topic was uh, on topical, if you will. Uh, we always tried to make it entertaining, and we never made it more than an hour long. And as I said, we picked up a client. Once we started picking up more clients, we stopped doing that. But if we needed more clients tomorrow, I would start doing that again. It's an excellent way to get out there and, again, meet doctors. Yeah, you bet. We, uh, we've we actually developed, uh, Bob, and again, I don't know how often you go to our licensee site there that we have, but we've, we've developed several. I've been not often enough. <laughs> yeah, we've developed several PowerPoint presentations for people to you know, make those presentations and we recorded uh, how to give the presentation. So we give them enough information to know how to do those uh, lunch and learns and uh, little seminars like that. Yeah, good. Now we got the idea from you. Huh? <laughs> you what? We got the idea from you. Well, there you go. Everything comes from us. <laughs> if we don't know it, you don't need to know it. Let's see. <laughs> Here's James. <laughs> He's all humility. Like, can you describe your invoicing process? I guess he wants to know how how do you get your money, your money? Well, Molly handles the invoicing, but uh, we invoice them every month around the same, uh, usually it's the last week of the month. Uh, we keep a spreadsheet on each one of our, 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 our clients uh, with claims that have been filed and then a listing of a, a total of what has been paid. And then it's you just tally it up at the end of the month. We also, uh, and, you know, multiply the, uh, the amount paid by the percentage that you charge the doctor. That's obviously what's due. We also add in any postage, any additional expenses. I, we never nickel and dime our clients. We don't keep track of, of uh, a dollar here or a dollar there. But if it's, if it's you know, $25, $30 out of our pocket, we'll bill them for that uh, with an appropriate receipt to, to prove that we've actually made the purchase. Um, and any other incidental charges that might be applicable. Do you, and then, you use a particular type of software for the invoices you send out? We do, and I believe that we got it from you, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but again, Molly handles that. I, I don't do the physical. I just go around and pick up the checks. Yeah. Uh, and most <laughs> of them, it's interesting enough, a lot of them still want to pay, pay by check. Uh, they don't like to uh, have the money electronically transferred from their account to ours. So yeah. uh, just that's how it works up here in the Northwest. Whatever works. That also gives you the chance to... Uh, have that eyeball to eyeball contact with them, which is probably good too. Yes, it is. And we're fortunate. Most of our clients pay right on time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Chris says, Bob, did you do any commercial advertising like newspapers, social media, et cetera? Well, we do some social media. I, I uh, work with a, uh, an SEO specialist who's got us on Yext, Y-E-X-T. Uh, so that when they someone searches for medical billing or credit card processing in my town, we're on the home page, the first page that uh, after the search is completed. But beyond that, no, I don't. We don't do any commercial advertising. Uh, we've tried catalogs and various medical associations here in the state with zero results from that because uh, that's it's a competitive market. So I find that print advertising, from my standpoint, isn't effective, and especially consumer advertising because it's you're aiming at it the masses and really you just want to address it, want it uh, focused on doctors. Yeah. That's my, that's my opinion anyway. Yeah. Bob, I don't know if we've shared this with you or not, but recently we uh, found out that a lot of licensees have had success joining a local uh, uh, medical society, uh, which will cost you a membership, but they'll let uh, non medical providers join as of vendors or supporting members of those societies. And boy, you're just right there when they have meetings and things, you can set up a little table and you're right there amongst them. They, they like to have supporting members, so they encourage uh, doctors to do business with you. And we, I, we have looked into that, just have not done it, but that's probably something that we should uh, consider yeah. once again. Steve says, uh, Bob, how did you find your recent practices? Have you focused on certain specialties? Well, right now, we're not, it's interesting. We're not focusing on specialties 
uh, because a lot of the clients we're getting are, are coming to us either from one of our existing clients or through BNI. And I, I hate, hate to keep you know putting it all on BNI, but directly or indirectly, that's where it's come from. So, uh, and it's you know if if you have uh, mental health clients, you're going to probably get some additional mental health providers, same sure. with acupuncture, whatever, whatever you end up, whatever your focus is at the moment, that's you're probably going to get additional clients in that same field. Yeah, we have licensees tell us that they they did what we told them to do in the live training workshop of marketing. And uh, got their first client, and they didn't have to do much marketing after that because you know if you treat somebody right, those doctors know other doctors in their field, and uh, it, it, it's true, absolutely true, and that's how we've gotten uh, some of our other, as I said, indirectly. So it's a second and third generation referral. Right. All right. Rich says, uh, Bob, since you mentioned calling insurance companies, uh, what is your insurance rejection rate? Uh, we used to track it. We haven't lately because it, uh, it's it's pretty reasonable. And when I say that, it's not that we don't get rege claims rejected, but sometimes they're rejected because something needs to be changed on the claim or there's something that needs to be corrected. But overall, I'd say it's around 2% or less. That's pretty consistent. Yeah, that's what it is nationwide through our system. We can track that through our system uh, for all licensees and all doctors and all claims. And uh, yeah, it's less than 2%. Which may, to some people, not even understand that that's really, really low. Most doctors, because they have so much going on in the practice, their staff doesn't have time to follow up on those, so their rejection rate could be 30, 40 percent. Well, and you and I were talking before we, we started the webinar, Patrick, and as we, you know, some it's in, in the hospitals, and it's millions of dollars of rejected claims that, you know, it's uh, so it, it, a lot of, I'm telling you, we've taken over for, for billers who are in house who didn't, uh, did not follow up on rejected claims. We came in and we started cleaning those up and we're, one of them is almost, we've had them for a year and a half. We're just now getting that near completed in terms of the cleanup process. It was Wow. Less. Yeah, it can be, uh, uh, you're right, a, a real backlog of, uh, and which is a real opportunity to go in and say to the doctor, if you let me take over your billing, I will also work on all of the rejected stuff that's uh, stacked up over the past year, you know. And you charge more for that. And you should, yeah, because it's yeah. a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Uh, that kind of leads right into this question from Jennifer. She says, "What is the average percentage that you charge?" Um, we're moving away from the, the, the low end, and we're charging between seven and eight percent, depending on on the need. Now, I should preface that by saying uh, we have the, uh, the in-home healthcare group that we're uh, doing billing about to do billing for. Uh, they might have a claim that's as high as twenty-five thousand dollars. I, in total, in total dollars. Let me back it up. A claim that could be as high as fourteen hundred dollars. We're not going to charge six, seven, or eight percent on that amount, so we cap it. So we might cap it at five hundred dollars. Yeah. Just to be reasonable. Right. That makes but, sense. You know, every, again, every the the more work you have to do, the higher the percentage. Right. That's that's our rule of thumb. Yeah. And we help with that, of course, as you know, Bob, we, we uh, will look at people's proposals and suggest to them for this particular specialty in your particular area, this might be what you should go in for. We always tell them to go in high because you can always come up with a reason for uh, dropping it down. Uh, so I think that's the biggest I think that's the biggest fault of most people in business, especially when they work out of their home. They don't think uh, that they have much overhead. So, hey, I can get by charging, you know, very little. You need to keep it up there, or it sounds like, uh, hey, I don't want to do business with the cheapest guy in town. You know, something's wrong. You know. Well, and your time is overhead, and you have to take that into account. What is my time worth? And if you've been in business for yourself, you understand what that means. Right. Uh, Robert wants to know: Is most billing to Medicare? Where is the other billing addressed? Uh, you mean other? I was assuming he's meaning meaning other payers. Uh, yeah. It's you know every insurance company has its issues, uh, whether it's uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Primera, Regions here in this area, United. Uh, we've I've never built for Medicaid, uh, hoping we never have to. That's a, a difficult one to deal with. Medicare isn't that bad to deal with; they're just not as fast. Uh, I find L and I to be fabulous to work with here, at least here in this state. Uh, I'm not sure I quite understood the question, but hopefully I answered it. Yeah, I think that was it. Uh, most people think of doctors as billing Medicare. They know that Medicare takes care of everybody over age 65. But for 
everybody else, it's uh, commercial insurance companies. Even right. with um, you know the Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare, uh, that still goes through private insurance companies that have to be billed. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And, and I think the only clients we have that bill Medicare are some of our mental health uh, clinics. And then, yeah. of course, naturopaths can't bill uh, Medicare, nor can acupuncturists. All right. Larry says, do you charge setup fees? And if so, how much? It does vary. Uh, we are, if, if we take over a client whose books are clean, in other words, there's not a lot of uh, aged billing issues uh, or uh, claims that need to be chased up, uh, we sometimes won't charge a startup fee. It could be, it can be anywhere from $500 if we do up to several thousand dollars, just depending on, on the, the client and what kind of software we're, you're going to be using. Quite often we're finding that they want us to use their software. And so if we're able to do that, we will. Yeah. I just saw a proposal from a licensee that they had charged $6,000 and got it, you know, as a setup fee. So it, it all depends on the situation, how many providers there are, how many accesses that you're going to give them to the system and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. And you, by the way, you, you, you walk into a, a provider's clinic or office and you can get a feel right away for what they're going to be able to pay. Sure. Some of them are, are very tiny and cash flow is a problem. So you have to be sensitive and you're not going to sell them a Steinway when they, they, they can only buy a, afford a little spin at piano. <laughs> right. And on the other hand, there are doctors uh, who they're, they're, they're used to paying set up fees on everything that comes into the office uh, because it takes, it, there's a cost involved in getting everything up and running. But uh, most of our licensees pass all of those costs for setting the doctor up in our system, of course, onto the doctor, and they cover that with, uh, and some of them even uh, throw in a little bit extra there so they can give them a, an iPad or something, you know, to use with the electronic medical record system. I know that's a great idea. I hadn't yeah. thought of that. So yeah. see, I, again, I'm learning from AVS. <laughs> Let's see, Robert says, are medical doctors willing to talk to you or do you speak with office managers? It varies. Uh, we've uh, met with office managers who have the authority to not only approve the deal, but write the check. Um, but how, most of the time you're going to be dealing with the doctor and getting that meeting is difficult. And that's where uh, personal introductions really make all the difference in the world, whether you've met them at, at an event and you, you can build a relationship or somebody you know knows them and they make the introduction. But uh, the, the cold call, you, I, you've got to do it when you're first building your business. You've just got to get out there and meet people because it doesn't mean you're not going to get a client. But the best way is, again, personal introductions or meeting them yourselves. Absolutely. Yeah, that's why a lot of licensees do the trade shows. You know, we have a big display booth that you can borrow from us to set up on a table or one that's freestanding. Uh, and, and people come to you at a trade show like that. Yes, that's another great way to, to meet people. We've done trade shows as well. Let's see. Laura says, what percentage range does he charge? I think you indicated uh, you're at about 7 to 8% at this point. That's correct. Uh, Ebony says, how many charts do you need to get live? Oh, how many clients do you need to get and to live comfortably? Well, yeah, that's, that's, see, that's, that's a tough question to answer because we've got a couple of tiny clients and then we've got three or four large clients. So it really just depends on what, what do you need to live comfortably? And then you set your goals accordingly. So, in other words, you don't stop adding clients and, and, until you, at least at the very least, until you've reached the income level that you want to be at. But keep in mind, attrition happens. You may lose clients for whatever reason. Someone might retire, they might move, they might sell the practice, and the new owner doesn't want to uh, keep uh, an outside billing service. So, uh, it, it, I can't answer the question. I've got 13 clients, and, and we live comfortably. But yeah. we want more clients because we want to live more comfortably. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> you can't have too many clients. Well, I guess you could. At some point, you don't know you don't want to work 80 hours a week, you know. So, well, that's when you hire people. Yeah, and you indicated earlier that you did have some people that work for you. Are they independent contractors? Uh, one is an employee. Two are independent contractors. Uh, they're some. One is more part time than the other two, but uh, they work for us. They one does nothing but posting. Uh, the other does a myriad of things, anywhere from uh, chasing up claims that haven't been paid. She'll do some posting. Uh, another one does nothing but call insurance companies and find out what's why there are issues with particular claims. And they work uh, out of their homes? They work out of their homes. Uh, once a week, we try to have them here in our home office. Again, 
always good for, for face to face. You right. want to see people and them see you. So uh, we've just make arrangements here. We've got a really nice condo. It's not an office, but you know we have to hide things when a company comes over, so it doesn't look like an office. But uh, we work here, and as long as we can, we will not uh, move our business out of our condo. Everything is virtual these days. I don't think if you, unless you really want an office, I think you can do fine without having to open an actual office. I think that's true with uh, probably 90% of our licensees at least because uh, there are some who've decided they want a place to get away. Like we have one lady who has uh, two little boys, four and six, and she, you know, her husband's a stay at home dad and she just needs to get out of the house to get away and focus on her business. So she's opened up a little office. I think she pays four or $500 a month. And then she's got some people that come in and work for her there, you know, so. That's great. And some, for some, you know, it, discipline is key. If you're home, and you're working from home, yeah. uh, you can, it can be easy to get distracted. Uh, my distraction is the refrigerator. So <laughs> you've just got to make sure that, uh, you know, I get dressed and I go to work. I mean, I literally get dressed and come to my office. Yeah. And so, because I, I want to have uh, that type of thought process when I sit down at my desk. That's the way I am. I, I literally come into this office, close the doors. I'm, I'm focused because I think of it as a business still. Uh, even though I'm working from my home, we have an office, a nice office complex if people come visit us, but uh, I don't have an office up there. I just, I work here out of my home. It's with, with this kind of, uh, technology, you don't need to leave house nowadays. <laughs> no. Although I must confess there are times I come back from the gym and I just sit down and go to work, but, uh, yep. it's, it's nice to, to work here and you're on the phone. People don't know if you're wearing gym shorts, a, a suit and a tie or, or, well, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, and it doesn't matter nowadays because no. The doctors don't come to your office. They, you know, you go and see them in their office. That's right. Yeah. Then I dress. Right. <laughs> well, at least you put on pants. <laughs> uh, okay. So Richard says, what is the average income per doctor office and how many claims do you process in an average day? Let, let me answer the first part because you kind of answered it just a while ago. It varies. Now, on our website, uh, Richard, you can go to a little calculator we have on there, and you'll see that for the average doctor that's seen 20 patients a day working five days a week, average claim is $100 a claim. You know, it'll show that you can earn about uh, $31,000 gross. But, you know, you have some overhead costs, of course, with, uh, you know, your office, your internet connection, phone, and so forth. So that's not net. So it just depends on the type of doctor, how many patients they see, and what their average claim amount is. But what about the uh, claims that you process in an average day or week? Can you give us a feel for claims? Well, we have a 76-year-old a massage therapist, and we file a handful of claims for her a month. Yeah. That's the smallest, and, right. and that's massage, so they're around $100. Uh, we have uh, mental health where uh, claims can be in the thousands of dollars because they have a TMS machine, which is designed for people with severe depression. It's a last resort, but it's not a, it's, it's very expensive not inexpensive. So uh, they can vary from uh, $100, even less in some cases, uh, all the way. Acupuncture, as you know, could be $70 uh, for not acupuncture, I beg your pardon, uh, a chiropractic treatment could be as low as $70 claim. Right. The actual allowed amount is going to be considerably less than that. So it, it just varies, again, depending on the doctor. So it's, it's hard to generalize and say the average claim is. Uh, I've never sat down and took all of our, our, our clients' claims, added them up, and came to an average. But uh, I'd probably it's safe to say with our medical billing or mental health client, uh, putting aside the TMS, probably average claim is two to three hundred dollars. Okay. Sense. Yeah. Uh, that kind of ties in with a question here from Mary Kay. She says, Bob, with uh, 12 to 13 clients, what is your total monthly billing? Do you have any idea dollar wise? Uh, well, again, I've never added it up. I mean, some of them are uh, in terms of what, <laughs> what we what we gross. I think what she's saying is what is the total amount of money collected from for all your doctors. But, you know, if you've never done the math on that, then it obviously provides you a, a, a decent living for you and your wife. So, I, you know, I, I think that's what she's getting at is the dollar number there. Yeah, it, it does. It, it does. I mean, we, we, we live comfortably. We've got a beautiful condo on the right on the Puget Sound. And that gives you an idea. We live in a very nice area. Uh, and even though we didn't get, buy this house with that income, we're maintaining that house with this income. So uh, <laughs> right. we're very fortunate, very blessed. Let's see. Jennifer says, do you collect off the total charge or what the doctor is actually reimbursed? 
it's what whatever the doctor gets paid and whatever we touch. And by that I mean if uh, if we only touch the insurance part of the the patient's claim, that's what we charge the doctor on. If we also are are posting and, and billing for coinsurance, copays, uh, uh, any uh, balance that's left over after deductible, we also when the doctor gets paid, we bill them on that as well. So it's anything that comes into the clinic. We have one clinic, by the way, that uh, pays us a percentage of every dime that comes in, whether we touch it or not. We have a, a special arrangement with them. Yeah, I've, I've uh, talked to several licensees, Bob, that uh, that's what they say is any, any amount of money that comes in, because somewhere during the process of billing and posting all that money, you know, you're, you're going to be touching it, so to speak. And so they'll, they'll charge a percentage of everything that's brought in. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's, it's easier bookkeeping for this particular client because they have uh, eight or nine, as many as 10 providers. There's a lot of moving parts. We do some additional things for them relative to payroll. So it's, uh, again, and I should point out to your, your, your potential licensees and the existing licensees, and that is every deal you put together can be totally different from the deal you put together the week before. It's just because every client has specific needs, and your job is to see if you can help address those and get paid in doing it. That's right. Um, Chris says, uh, do licensees sign up hospitals as well? We just talked about that a little earlier. Right. You've got some exciting news later on, so I won't spoil that for you. <laughs> yeah. We'll just say this, folks. Uh, you can't do the billing for hospitals. Most of them have their own proprietary system, their own staff that's dedicated to that. It's a completely different system that they bill on for institutional billing, it's called, versus, uh, you know, clinical billing like for doctors, but we are constantly looking at new revenue sources for us as a company, as well as for our licensees. And we, we are working on some things right now that involve the billing for hospitals and you'll be able to tap into that and have, have a residual income from that. So, uh, all right, let's see now, Bob, all the, all the questions start coming in here in the last uh, 15 minutes. So here they start joining up here. Here's somebody, Dan says, I just joined 30 minutes late. <clears throat> but what's your top marketing channel to start farming uh, to get those providers? Uh, it's uh, business networking. Is that how we'd summarize that, Bob? It really is business networking, getting out, meeting people, and uh, other people that are your the, the the key to success, I think, in getting referrals is finding referrals for other businesses because they'll reciprocate. It's givers gain. Yes, givers gain. That's a good way to put it, Bob. You're right because when you go out to those networking meetings. Of course, those other business people are there to help build their business as well. So you basically look for networking uh, referral partners, I guess you would call them, people who market to the same market that you market to. An insurance agent that sells insurance to doctors, for example, would be a good partner. Right. And there's nothing more rewarding, by the way, than, than providing a, a business that's going to bring additional money into one of your uh, uh, power partners, if you will, somebody in one of your networking groups. So. Uh, it, and that it just comes back to you. I should point out in this the seven years I've been doing networking, I've, I've gone to hundreds of networking meetings. I've never once asked somebody, uh, posed the question to somebody in the networking groups, would you like to do business with me or can we talk about doing business? I've never approached them once to do yeah, business. Right. They all come to me yep. because they got to know me, the trust factor was established, and then we moved forward on the, with their invitation, not because of mine. So be patient. Yes. And, and folks, those of you who are not familiar with the business networking or haven't done it or it scares you, <coughs> that's part of what we do in that week's training down here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We go into detail about how to do that the correct way. So you'll get guidance on that step by step. Uh, plus, we have uh, materials on our website that you can go through, too, that gives you a lot of training on, on how to do that the right way. Because there is a right way to do that and a wrong way, isn't there, Bob? <laughs> And, and there is. And if you do it the wrong way, you're, it's it's going to be not a fun experience and you're going to end up uh, leaving with a bad taste in your mouth. So do it the right way and you, you'll be rewarded. I've been to some of those meetings where I could have uh, I could have pointed out to you the people that were doing it you know, the wrong way. You can just see it, you know, across the room. Yeah. OK, well, here's here's a question. While some others are being typed in here, we're going to wrap it up, Bob, here in just a second. But uh, this one's from the Mary Kay that I said I would give out earlier. And this is just something that I have not asked you ahead of time. So you don't have to do this there. She's asking about the, uh, you know, your website address so she could go just see if you're for real. 
No, I, I knew that was that question was coming when you said I'll save it to last because I don't want everyone to go Google this. Uh, my website address. I'm happy to have you look at it, and if you want to give me any uh, feedback, you can do so. Just, just send me a, an email through the website itself. It's platinum, P-L-A-T-I-N-U-M. The initial C is in Charlie, F is in Frank, S is in Sam. dot com. PlatinumCFS.com. Okay, I think I just typed that in right. PlatinumCFS.com. I'm sending it through the little chat box there. Oh, so everybody nice. can go there, and uh, hopefully you just click on that link, and it uh, probably will just go right there, and we may hear uh, Bob walking out on the screen here talking to us here in a moment. Hi. My Bob will be president of the Platinum Cash I'm, I'm listening to you right now. You're interested in both of the services that we offer. Medical billing for medical professionals. Oh, that's great, Bob. I had not seen that. I'll watch the whole thing here after the webinar. Yeah, that was fun to do. And by the way, I wrote the script and I did it in one take. I believe that. You had some radio background or something, didn't you? Yeah, I had a radio program on uh, Sporting News Radio with a couple of the guys uh, a number of years, about seven years ago, uh, for seven years. And that was a lot of fun. I th you, you and I have had this conversation before, but I've never met a microphone or a camera that I didn't like. <laughs> Me neither. That's why I love doing these webinars. I'm a ham at heart. <laughs> sure. Try to keep bu bugging every week if I can be on again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you and I could do a show together, I'm sure. I you bet know, we could. For licensees. We could get on here every week and just talk about marketing and all kinds of ideas. I'm in. Hey, don't say that now. No, I, that would be fun, Patrick. If you ever want to explore that, happy to talk to you about it. Uh, I'm sure the licensees would love it. As you know, Bob, we do webinars on a regular basis for licensees. Uh, we did one last Friday, and we'll probably do one this Friday. But uh, I'm always looking for other ways that I can interact. And with this technology, of course, we can do webinars and show slides, and you and I talk on video here at the same time. And it's almost like having your own personal TV show. I, I love the technology that's available to us today. Well, the question yeah, is flowing down here. So I guess people are getting bored or else they're checking their email or doing something else they shouldn't be doing right now, but besides listening <laughs> to us. So Bob, I'm just going to ask you a couple more questions and I'll let you go. Um, if you had some advice for somebody that was looking to get into any business, not just this one, uh, what was the what would be the, the most pertinent thing that you could talk to somebody about as far as what they should be doing to uh, prepare themselves for getting their own business going if they've been used to working for somebody else? Well, I didn't have, I, I actually, we did have this luxury. Uh, I would, I would find someone in that field that you know and talk to them uh, and find out the, the, the pros and the cons and what, find out what that person would, would, would tell them they need to do in order to, you know, to avoid the pitfalls that they might have gone, uh, fallen into when they were first getting their business running. I think that's important. Also, I, I, one of my favorite books is The E-Myth. Uh, I, I'm oh, yes. just starting it again. Yeah. It's a tremendous book for teaching you how to discipline yourself. Yeah, I've got uh, it. And how to set goals and, and put systems in place so that your business doesn't own you, so that you own your business. And that's a constant thing, by the way. It's, it, you'll, you'll never get it perfect, but you can always improve it and make it better. So highly recommend that book. Yeah, and then, Michael, uh, uh, let's see who wrote that. Michael, I'll look at it here. But he also wrote a book, by the way, called The E-Myth for Physicians. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Uh, that might be a good one to uh, – that might be good to read and uh, give away to a doctor as, you know, just a thank you gift or something. Absolutely. Thank it's, you for that. It's all about building Michael Gerber. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Michael Gerber, the e-myth, e-myth as in entrepreneur myth. Yeah. It's an excellent book. It is. So well, I, hope that, I hope that helps. Yeah, that's good. Here's uh, uh, James says, I did not understand your comment, Bob, about capping the invoices at $500. Oh, that was on that. Uh, Home health care. Yeah, that has this. So big I'll, I'll, I'll better explain that. If. You're charging a percentage, let's say it's 7%, uh, and if you just do the math. If it's a $200 a payout times 7%, that's what, uh, 7 times, it's $140. I'm sorry, $14. Whereas, but if it's a $1,400 claim and you're, you're doing the same amount of work, the same effort, it wouldn't, we don't think, this is our opinion, that it would be fair to charge the client 7% on $1,400. 
So we cap it at 500. Yeah. So we'd only build them 7% on $500, not the, the complete 1400. I got you. $7,500 would be uh, uh, still $35 for that one claim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The same amount of effort. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I thought of Michael Gerber before I saw this, but I just saw in the box here, Larry uh, actually tapped in uh, the name Michael Gerber for us. Thank you, Larry. Um, all right. So one last question, Bob, I'll let you go. If you had to do something different, if you were starting this business from scratch today, uh, what would you do differently? I would have joined BNI an, an hour, a year earlier. Uh, <laughs> and I would probably... I don't know that I'd do anything differently other than that, because I think that was the only thing that, that stunted our growth is we got started late uh, and didn't get involved in BNI until we were about a year into it. So uh, I think that that's the fastest way to help grow your business. And that's what I would have done differently. So, uh, and if, if again, if, if you're doing this full time right off the bat, and there's some urgency, you're probably gonna get clients a lot faster than we did. Again, there wasn't an urgency when we first began. Right. All right. Well, Bob, thank you. I've even gotten some notes here from people typing things in about uh, Richard says advanced thanks to Bob. Uh, and uh, oh, yeah, Larry typed in 7% of $1,400 is $98. Yeah. So uh, that's why you cap it at 500. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. And, and, and I can I can appreciate that. And, you know, if one of you licensees may want to do it differently. That's just my our take, that's our decision. But sure. if I could just if I could just wrap up to by saying, Patrick, thank you for allowing me to be on this webinar. And thank you for all that you do for uh, for Molly and I and for all the ABS licensees. You are exactly who you say you are and, and, and advertise, advertise yourself as. And uh, you're a good man. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Bob. I appreciate that too. Mutual admiration society here for sure. You bet. All right. Thanks again.